our next song is going to be Do you like this song, 520? He hides my soul. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hides my soul in the cleft of the Rivers of pleasure I see He hides my soul In the cleft of the rock The shadows of thy thirsty land He hides my love In the depths of his love And covers me there How many of us are here? Okay, let's bow ahead and begin with our, our worship. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, um, thank you for this beautiful Sabbath morning. We gather here together, not in person, but through uh, remote. Lord, help us to listen to your words today, and uh, we ask your presence here. Lord, please talk to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, hello everyone. Hello. hello. <laughs> okay. So, <coughs> today's title is Workers in the vineyard based on uh, the Bible Matthew 20th chapter Matthew 20th chapter so this is um, one of the familiar Bible the parable 
but uh, keep this in mind. The first one is why the owner of the vineyard paid first to the last invitees. Second point is, is it legitimate argument raised by the first invitees? And third one is, what is the meaning of the last will be the first? So I'd like to invite you to open your Bible, Matthew 20th chapter. I'm going to read it through uh, NIV, but it doesn't matter that much. Pick up your Bible and read your Bible. And check with me if the pastor says right. Okay. Um, Matthew 20 and verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like a land landowner who went out early in the morning to hire men to work in his vineyard. So this is very a uh, familiar scene because uh, in Sonoma County we have a lot of uh, vineyard and wine, uh, grapes, those things, and uh, because of this COVID-19. Uh, Sonoma County, the statistics is so high, and one of the contributors uh, would be these uh, workers in the field, the pre pretty much uh, Hispanic workers. They work hard and clock together and uh, spend a lot of time together and pack together in a, a family. So there's uh, some... Uh, news goes around that uh, because of these uh, workers. The Sonoma County COVID is very rampant like that. Yeah, it's, it makes sense. Okay, verse 2. <coughs> he agreed to pay them a denarii, a denarius for the day, so kind of a daily wage, a wage for, for the day and send them into his uh, vineyard. So, listen carefully. There is a, a deal between the owner and the workers. How much the owner is supposed to pay to these workers? There it is. Yeah, just ten dollars, right? A day, a day, day's wage. Is it ten dollars? The minimum wage? Pretty much. <laughs> Verse 3, about the third hour he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. In Hebrew mind, uh, supposedly the sun rises at 6 o'clock in the morning. So that begins the time, uh, zero hour, and uh, seven o'clock in the morning will be one hour. So normally when Bible says at three, third hour, and we plus how many hours? Plus six, right? They count uh, from the sunrise about uh, six o'clock. So. Uh, three, three o'clock here, and it's going to be three plus six, and this is nine o'clock. Still very uh, in the morning, a good, good hour. And the owners are out there, and there are still workers, just like do this, doing nothing, right? So hey, you guys, yes. Yeah, we left on time the same way in my culture. Oh, really? Yeah. So tell me about it. Because like um, 7 o'clock we say is the, you know, in my language, uh, on the first hour. Really? <laughs> and 3 o'clock is 9, we call it 9, the ninth hour. 
Oh, so, so oh, yeah. biblical. I envy you. When you read Bible, it touches your heart more than more than every one of us here. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Because uh, the Saturday we call Saturday in English Sabbath, but in Hispanic, in in Span Spanish, and other many other nations, they call Sabado. It's a Sabbath, so it's very uh, easy to understand. Saturday Sabbath is is quite uh, something really. Uh, make sense to them. Okay, let's move on. So he invited at, at the third hour and move on. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I'll pay you whatever is right. So he's going to pay uh, whatever is right. He's going to pay just a, a day a day wage, and he moves on at six o'clock and nine o'clock, which means uh, at noon and at three o'clock in the afternoon, ninth hour. So he went. He went out again in about six sixth hour and the ninth hour, and I did the same thing. So invite them, and I'm going to pay you whatever is right. About the 11th hour, wow, at the last moment, 11th hour, which means in the afternoon. It's easy to calculate if you see the round clock, uh, the, the uh, wall clock, just like we, we have in church, and across uh, the number, and easy to uh, figure out so eleventh across and five o'clock in the in the in the evening, right? And he asked them, "Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? There are still poor guys who couldn't get a job and dwindling his time, spending time doing nothing." And this is what they say: "Because no one has hired us," they answered. He says to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. Wow, what a blessing. He invited uh, to the vineyard and work. What a privilege that uh, he could work. So we can easily imagine that uh, this vineyard is God's kingdom. Uh, where our God, his authority reaches to this uh, realm and uh, they can uh, rest and they can do and they can work and enjoy the companion with our God. So church has to be the place that everybody is welcome, whether they are uh, latecomers, um, whether uh, some of us have a long history of our faith, been here been here in our church, uh, in our faith for a long time, but also there are uh, out there some people, they do not know Jesus that, uh, for that long, but still they should be uh, welcomed to this God's kingdom. And now, here's a problem right here. Eighth verse, when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages. Look at this. Beginning with the last ones, hired and going on to the first. Wow. I think this, the owner has uh, some very uh, special intention why he has to pay the last person first and the first person last. In verse 9, it says, The workers who were hired about the 11th hour came and each received how many? How much? One denarii. Yeah, a day's wage. A day's wage. $10. No, 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 not $10. $10 is one hour age, right? So 
about $100. Okay? They were happy. They just worked just for just an hour and got the full, full wage of the day. So very lucky ones. So when they came, who were hired first, they expected to receive more. Is it legitimate uh, idea that, okay, this guy only works just one hour and the full wage and we worked 10 times more and we expect more. Is it legitimate imagination? What do you think? Is it good I or bad? It, it was their expectations, not the owner's expectations. <laughs> That's right. But uh, common sense... Um, it is a just expectation. Oh, I'm Correct. sorry. I didn't uh, share. Ooh. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. Wow. Sorry about that. We're okay. <laughs> You're okay? <laughs> okay. Because I just uh, uh, played, I mean, uh, played this, but you, you couldn't uh, listen to this. Wow. I mean, you couldn't watch this. Sorry about that. So, uh, in a sense, it is very uh, a reasonable argument because uh, saying that, God, you are not fair because I worked more than those people and how could you treat them, uh, treat us equally like this? So, in a sense, it is, in human mind, well, acceptable, but let's see. Pastor? Yes? Um, all we have is the benediction here. We're, we're still not seeing you. Great. Oh, benediction? Yeah, we're on benediction. Oh. So we're not seeing what's behind you. Oh, really? Okay. Sorry about that. Don't worry Maybe. about it. Uh, yeah. Because, because, uh, because, oh. Better. This is wrong. I mean, this is wrong. Uh, I think I I played the wrong uh, PowerPoint. Sorry about that. Okay. We're listening to you. Yeah. But good to good to uh, let me know, Jerry. I mean, yeah. You have a nice shot. <laughs> yeah. There we okay. go. Okay, is it better now? That's yeah. very good, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. So when they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. This man who were hired last uh, worked only one hour, right? And they said, and you have made them equal to us, and we have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. Well, does it make sense to you? Yeah. Okay, let's move on. 13, but he answered one of them, friend, I'm not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for a, for a denarius? Is that true? Uh, going back to a verse 2, he agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and send them into his vineyard. So there is no argument here, They're very clear. What was, what was the, um, the contract? And they signed it, right? They signed it, they, and they agreed to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, the land, landowner should have have them signed it, right? <laughs> yeah. so, so there's no argument in, hey, there's a paper. You, you signed it, so no argument like this. But probably the landowner didn't have them sign the paper. And 14. <clears throat> Take your pay and go. I want to give, you, give the man who was hired. 
last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? This is very interesting comment. I am generous, I just treat them all generously and are you arguing with me? Are you envious about this? And this is the, uh, the last uh, conclusion of this uh, parable. Like, so the last one, the last will be first and the first will be last, like this. Well, in Romans 9.20 it says, But who are you, O man, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to him, who formed it? Why did you make me like this? This is an interesting Bible text. So God is our creator. Whatever he, he did, whatever he does, it is always right. And there's no argument. Hey, Lord, why did you make me a, uh, a bicycle, not a Mercedes? We, we can't say the, uh, the, uh, the creator. It, it is kind of useless. So I, I love uh, my name because my, my father gave it to me. And you should love your names too because there is no argument. Um, sometimes we feel like I wish I I would be taller. Well, <laughs> but that's okay. God made you like that, and we appreciate appreciate it, right? Uh, there is a, a lady, a very uh, good-looking lady, beautiful. But uh, she had a terrible uh, car accident, and when the car was uh, on fire, and I, I guess 60% uh, of his whole body, including her face, is damaged. So, very uh, sad, sad. But still, uh, she loved her face and his condition and he, she just gave everything to, to God and her whole heart like this. So I just appreciate what I have today. I have two hands and two feet. I can walk and I can run. And sometimes, uh, who knows, we have a terrible accident and we, we may lost some of our body parts. So it's always thankful that God made us in this way and no complaints, right? Uh, from time to time, I love the, the fireworks. And I remember um, when I was in Seoul, there is, in the center of Seoul, there is a um, uh, little, we call uh, mountain, but it is not a mountain in uh, American way, it's a little hill. And we, we saw the uh, Liberation Day, August 15, and the fireworks, beautiful fireworks, and I remember that. And I still remember that the fireworks, uh, 200 years anniversary of the United States, 19, 1976 is a 200 years uh, anniversary. So I still remember that uh, firework. This is an interesting observation because the firework, in Korean way, the, the word, wording of firework, fireworks, bulkonnori, the first part, part is a uh, fire. Bul, bul means fire. And the second part, quote, means flower. So in American way, when, when we see the uh, fireworks and firework, but 
in Korean mind, okay, that's the uh, fire flower, literally, fire flower is the uh, firework. But in Japanese language, Japanese word, Nihongo, Nihongo, Japanese word, it is called hanab Hanabi, Hanabi Yubi, Hanabi Asobi, Hanabi, but it's uh, quite opposite. Hana means flower, and B means uh, fire. So in uh, Korean mind, Korean, Korean see that, okay, this is fire, flower, but in Japanese mind, it's opposite. It's uh, flower, fire. Does it make sense to you? Okay, but uh, Koreans cannot argue with uh, Japanese. Hey, yeah. this is fire flower, not flower fire. <laughs> and the same way the Japanese uh, would uh, argue uh, with Koreans. Uh, no, 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 this is flower fire, not fire flower. <laughs> so in God's kingdom, God announced and God demanded, and God said, okay, this is the rule of heaven. Sometimes it is not quite uh, similar to the rule of the earth, but God is saying that I'm the, I have the authority to do this. And I made you, I have the authority, I set up my own rule. So whatever God says, it is always right. Because the salvation, that's true. It is not by our uh, work, but by our God's grace. And Ephesians 2, 8, it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast like this. Other religions, for example, the Buddhist, they pretty much focused on their behavior, action. Do something is more important than receiving God's uh, free gift. So, as a, as a way of discipline their body and mind, they practice 3,000 bow down completely bow down, which means uh, your head and your knees should be on the ground. And how many times? 3,000 times. <laughs> well, it, was, it would be a good exercise, but uh, easily exhausted uh, by doing that. So God said, okay, I love you, but still I love out there who do not love me. That's God's way. We may say that, oh Lord, we have been here in this faith, in this church, more than 50 years and 60 years. How could you treat them equally to me, who only spend with you one, one year? But the God's grace is all the same. In the Bible, uh, there's an example of um, the last became the first. The first one is, uh, First Chronicles chapter 5 and verse 1. We remember uh, the Jacob son, 12th son. The first one, firstborn is a Reuben, right? The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, he was the firstborn. But when he defied his father's marriage bed, his rights as firstborn were given to the sons of Joseph, son of Israel. So he could not be listed in the genealogical record in accordance with his birthright. And verse 2. And though Judah was the strongest of his brothers, and the ruler came from him, the rights of the firstborn belong to Joseph. Even if the firstborn was uh, Reuben, but he didn't receive the birthright. It does not come with the, the sequence of the birth, 
but God sees their heart. And Joseph was the one who has uh, God's heart like this. And truly, it is true because the, the one who has the birthright has supposed to, supposed to have uh, two portion, two portions of the inheritance. And Joseph's son, Manasseh and Ephraim, right? They received the land when they entered the Canaan. And suggesting that Joseph was the firstborn in uh, in spiritual way. Second one is that we we know uh, the story of uh, David, right? David was the last son, and when Samuel met uh, Jesse, and one by one Jesse's son just passed by one by one, but uh, Samuel couldn't find the right one. He says, 1 Samuel 16 and 11, So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? They are still the youngest, Jesse answered. But he is tending the sheep. This phrase suggests that this is the, the all, uh, these are all you, you have, your sons? And he said, yeah, pretty much, but there is uh, one, the la last little, little boy shepherding, pretty much ignore him, okay? Yeah, there is another son, but he's so young and um, just shep shepherding sheep in the field. But eventually Samuel said, send for him and will not sit until he arrives. I'm going to wait for him, and we are not going to eat before he comes like this. So in God's way, God wanted to uh, choose the one who has the wholehearted heart, the one who, whose heart is after God's, God's own, and David was the one. So it does not say that okay, the birthright has to be, uh, comes, to, comes to be with the sequence, the order. No, it's going to be a sequence of how much they love uh, their God, like this. And finally, verse 13, So Samuel took the horn of, of oil and anointed him in the presence of his uh, brothers, and from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power, and Samuel then went to Ramah. So, please remember that it is not, uh, not by the length of our of faith, but, uh, but by of the, uh, the intensity of how much we love our God to be uh, the chosen one. Another example is from, uh, taken from um, one of the thieves of, of the cross, right? And he, he was the one at the last moment of his life, he confessed and asked God, Lord, please remember me when, you, uh, when you're in heaven like this. And you know what? Many people envied uh, this, this man because it uh, seems to be he is doing whatever he likes to do and at the last moment he'll repent and guaranteed the eternal kingdom. Are you also envying him? What do you think? Do you wish you like, like him? No, no. As long as we we have we are in His kingdom, we are already been blessed so far, right? If you have been in our church, in our faith, and it is incomparable to this the last moment, people. But God's grace is so rich; He gave him the last chance to be 
uh, saved like this. So then he said, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. Think about this uh, Bible text and apply to uh, the parables in the vineyard workers. The, at the beginning of the day, the one who were invited and uh, had the privilege to work so far, and he was uh, relaxing and he was happy doing this, but out there, who were not invited, and they were so frustrated and devastated and spending time doing nothing and miserable. Compared to that, this uh, first comers is really a blessed one, right? But when something good happens to us, and we can easily, easily forget God's grace. The Desire of Ages has it this. Boast a man, uh, this man means uh, the thieves, right and left, besides uh, Jesus. Boast a man who were crucified with Jesus had that at first railed upon him, and one under his suffering only became more desperate and defiant. But not so with his companion. This man was not a hardened criminal. He had been, uh, uh, he had been led astray by evil associations, but he was less guilty than many of those who stood beside the cross, revealing the Savior. He had seen and heard Jesus and had been convicted by his teaching, but he had been turned away from him by the priests and rulers. Seeking to stifle conviction, he had plunged deeper and deeper into sin until he was arrested, tried as a criminal, and condemned to die on the cross. So suggesting that this saves a thief was not a stranger at all. He knew that who Jesus was, and he has been, he has heard, heard of uh, Jesus and his teachings and his uh, message, and also the miracles and on so on. And the last moment, this little flame in his heart and tuned into uh, Jesus and uh, got saved. So this is not just happened out of sudden, out of nowhere. No, he knew about Jesus. And there's no question now, there are no doubts, no reproaches. When condemned for his crime, the thief had become hopeless and despairing. But strange tender thoughts now spring up. He calls to mind all he has heard of Jesus. How he has healed the sick, and pardon sin. He has heard the words of those who believed in Jesus and followed him, weeping. He has seen and read the title above the Savior's head, the King of the Jew. He has heard the passerby by repeated, some with grieved, quivering lips, others with jesting and mockery. The Holy Spirit illuminates his mind, and little by little, the chain of evidence is joined together. In Jesus, bruised, mocked, and hanged upon the cross, he sees the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Hope is mingled with anguish in his voice as the helpless, dying soul casts, casts himself upon a dying Savior. Lord, remember me, he cries, when thou comes into thy kingdom. And the promise was granted. 
This is because uh, Romans 3, uh, uh, Roman 3 and verse 22, and this righteous, righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There's no difference. So Bible teaches us that our God is fair God and loving God and our salvation, we are not boasting our salvation because this is the gift from God. There's nothing uh, we, we could do. And in God's kingdom, the rule of God, how he uh, ruled our, um, the whole world is that not based on the earthly rule, but based on God's rule. And through this Bible uh, parable, God is um, teaching us that I'm the creator, I'm the owner, and I have the full authority, full authority what to do. And nobody is going to argue uh, with him. So back to uh, uh, this comment. But this is that the previous chapter, Matthew 19 and 30. This is repeats in the 20th chapter, and chapter 16, I mean chapter 20 and verse 16. So the last will be first, and the first will be uh, last. But this is repeated, because already God told us the previous chapter, 19 and 30, it says, but many who are first will be last, and may who are last will be first. So we are not going to boast our history, our experience with God such a long time. But today we are, ch we are being challenged by this concept that are we, regardless of the long history of our faith, but are we still serious about our God? And uh, God is going to see us it does not say that, uh, it doesn't matter. Even you are a pastor or elder and deacon and deaconess and you have an important role of the church, it doesn't matter, but God would see your pure heart and your sincere uh, intention. And even so, just newborn uh, Christian would be the first, first one because it doesn't matter how long we have our faith, but still uh, our true mind toward God, our sincerity will be uh, counted. So, our church is, the, is a good institution to lead us to, uh, to the kingdom, but it doesn't guarantee that we'll be all uh, saved. No, not simply going to a Seventh Adventist church guarantees uh, the salvation, but what guarantees our salvation is our pure heart toward our God. And hopefully we can be the, not the last one, but we'll be the first one in our uh, in our uh, faith race. So, my um, loving fellows, saints, we don't have to, uh, we don't have to uh, brag about our uh, religious life, spiritual life for 60 years and 50 years and 30 years, 20 years. And even we have lack of experience, we don't have to be frustrated. The most important thing is that God gave us a little seed in our heart to grow, grow to, to our faith. And the big question is that, can I still keep this seed in my heart? And can we see this seed grow and eventually we are all used 
by our God, and that's really a good um, concept we have to cherish. So everyone, I hope uh, you will be uh, happy with your God all the time, and we have to be humble um, to receive His holy words, and also uh, question, give you, uh, ask you a question that are you really sincere about uh, toward our God, and we'll be all all good. And God is always in our side, and God is going to give us His grace and His love. Okay. Let's bow our head and uh, close. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, thank you so much for your grace and your love, Lord. And as the, uh, the parable teaches us, we confess that you have the uh, uh, total authority what you have done. Lord, we listened and we noticed that your everlasting love toward us, your sincere, the rescue mission continues to the, the last person. Lord, help us not to grumble and uh, help us not to envy anybody who came late, but help us to examine our heart if we have really good heart toward you. And that's always uh, really good and always worthy to think about. But Lord, once again, thank you for the salvation, the free gift. And help us to this gift until Jesus comes back. Lord, protect us this, during this uh, crisis, crisis of, of the uh, pandemic and help us to see uh, in person in the near future when everything comes back to back to the normal. Lord, help us to have a victorious week ahead and help us to praise all the time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you. Okay. Happy Sabbath. Have a good one. Okay. Thank you for listening to Okay, Perry, talk to everyone. Yeah. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Sabbath, everybody. So me and Will, Patty and Will. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you, Perry. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Perry. Uh, uh, Tui, are you still there? Would you like to? Yeah, would you like to say something to the uh, our church family? Say something. Okay. I wish you very well today for the happy Sabbath. And God bless you all. This is Tui. Yeah, this is Tui.